All right, what's going on everyone? Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. So since I started this channel, I have always had experimental brews in the sort of thumbnail and in the description and stuff, but I've never really done that. I've mostly only showed finished decks. So today I put together this deck super quick and we're just going to kind of test it. I've only played one game with it just to kind of get a feel for it. Seems okay. So we're basically trying to fix affinity. We're going to try to do something a little bit different, build it a little bit differently and see how this works. So the idea behind this deck is we're focusing a little bit more on slowing our opponent down. So we have Lodestone Golem, for example, that makes non-artifact spells cost one more to cast which all of our spells are artifacts so that's not a big deal we also have ethereum sculptor which makes all of our artifacts cost one less to cast so all of our opponent stuff costs one more all of our stuff cost one less so the idea is we still have the aggro plan right we have mim knights we have ornithopters we have signal pests we have vault scourge which by the way i always hate how this like this is the real mana curve because we're always paying one for this uh but yeah we have all of our aggro creatures we have cranial plating we can go wide get steel overseer for plus one plus one counters you know we could do all of our typical go wide go fast stuff with affinity the difference is because we can't go absolutely blistering fast with mox opal we will have this aggro package that we will get sometimes but when we don't we can make all of our stuff cheaper all of our opponent's stuff more expensive and we have mystic forge which lets us look at the top card of our library and cast them so long as they're colorless which all of our stuff is colorless or artifacts these are not colorless technically but we could cast everything with mystic forge and uh we're just gonna try to uh go fast uh we also have these makes the opponent not be able to cast more than one spell per turn turns off storm turns off a lot of decks actually when we're casting like multiple spells mystic forge and our opponent can only cast one per turn uh that allows us to go wider than the opponent so that's the idea uh sideboard uh pretty typical stuff why is it sorted like that that's interesting you know we can turn stuff off we have more of these if that's necessary for storm we have graveyard hate uh multiple graveyard hate we have removal hate we have more removal hate we have arcbound ravagers in the sideboard because they're too slow for the main board at the moment in my opinion uh, you know, I'm not an expert. Uh, we have Dragon's Claw for burn decks. Um, yeah, stuff like that. So anyway, let's just get into a game. We'll go to tournament practice. And, well, god dang it. Didn't click that in time. It's fine, I'll create my own game. And we'll probably get an opponent like that really quick. Lots of people still play modern on Magic Online. Of course, people are kind of stuck in their houses at the moment. I didn't mention, by the way, that uh, it is absolutely pouring rain right now. It's probably affecting my audio, making it sound kind of fuzzy. This is fine. This is totally fine. We have new cards. Look at this. We got one copy of every new card. How perfect is that? I see no reason not to keep this. This is fine. So, put a place one swept teeth. That's fine. Our turn. Draw. Master of Ethereum is great. So, we will play this. We will play Mim Knight. We will pay two life. And we're going to pass the turn. So next turn, uh, I'm not sure if we should play Sculptor or Canonist. We'll have to wait. See what the opponent's playing because I don't know yet. But if we play Sculptor, uh, if we draw another land, we can play uh, Loadstone, Loadstone Golem on turn three. Or Master of Ethereum and the Canonist. Or, you know, who knows? It just depends on what we draw. But, uh... Yeah, this doesn't seem terrible. I want to play the Wooded Foothills and just passes? Well, how am I supposed to know what to do if you're not playing anything? That's interesting. That makes me want to play Ethereum Sculptor. So we're just going to go to combat. And we're going to attack for two. So we're not nearly as fast as typical affinity, but this ability to make all of our stuff cheaper it kind of leads to more explosive turn threes and turn fours. So we're not like going crazy and you know just like killing the opponent on turn three but on turn three we're going crazy enough to potentially kill the opponent on turn four or five what is this deck is this the uh the toolbox deck looking like it knight of autumn that's not what i want to see but what are they going to hit we don't have too many crazy targets right now i guess master or uh, the ethereum sculptor is pretty good but it's not devastating that's what they blow up okay sure let's see a land please please land that's not a land this kind of shuts down this deck, but they don't have a ton of removal. So I think we just play Cranial Plating. We'll get this on Walt Scourge. 
I'm assuming this is like the pod style creature toolbox type of deck and the cranial plating on a vault scourge is probably going to be good assuming they don't just like combo off next turn and win but putting it to 13 we go to 19 and we'll pass that ethereum sculptor would have been so good though we could have played master of ethereum could have played cranial plating for one and equipped it uh, lots of ways for that to have been really good opponent leaves all their mana open probably a lightning bolt or a path x oh restoration angel that's not good i think we just lose now i think we lose again still losing with affinity because that's uh that's pretty brutal that's too slow i mean can we even win here i don't even know if this is uh, even remotely possible i'm gonna play this just because and we're gonna pass but i will probably concede just to make this game go faster because i'm pretty sure this is pretty much over Eldritch Evolution, yeah, this is the kind of the, the creature toolbox type of thing. Kiki Jiki, yeah, and that's uh, that's an infinite combo, so we lose. All right, well, not looking good. Still not looking good. If that uh, that Ethereum Sculptor hadn't died, that would have changed everything. But we bring this in because it can turn off Kiki Jiki. Bring an Arcbound Ravager, not that, Arcbound Ravagers for the Knight of Autumns. Uh, we can go down one of these. We can go down probably one of these because they're trying to combo off right we're not gonna be going too crazy with those i don't know if this really helps that much in this matchup so we can go down these and we'll try this we will go first one land is not good hmm yeah no don't want it gonna mulligan we've got a one lander again but this hand is much more capable of winning with one land so i guess we keep this one we can put this on bottom so far these new cards not doing a whole lot it would have been much much different last game if that ethereum sculptor had lived but it did not but we get three creatures on turn one before the opponent even has a turn so that's pretty good the problem is if they play like a one one then all of a sudden this just doesn't look good path to exile would be fine though no they get a forest into a bird of paradise that's fine zero power not concerned that's pretty good we need another land though we go to combat attack opponent takes it goes to 16 we go to 19 pay two more life for another vault scourge and pass the turn if they play like any creature though this just doesn't look great phyrexian revoker will turn off kiki jiki that will turn off their combo but we still lose to like restoration angel oh uh, yeah that's uh that's pretty brutal right there so that turns off our midnights basically draw a steel overseer but no lands why i just i never get to play steel overseers it's not fair such a great card and it's like i never play them ever I'm cursed to never be able to play Steel Overseer. Put it goes to 12, we go to 19. We're gonna kill them in six turns with Vault Scourge, guys. Season Pyromancer. Okay. Does it have like reach or anything? It's fine. Not a big deal. Draw a land, please. Okay. Great. Great. Fantastic. Attack for two. And we will pass the turn because we can't play anything. This deck's just not fun to play anymore, to be honest. I just, I never have fun playing it. It's just, every time I play it, it's just kind of miserable. The deck just doesn't do anything anymore. It's just, I can't ever get anything going, ever. Metagame's not controlling at all, and yet I just, I can never, like, I can't stick a Steel Overseer for my life. And yet, if I draw an Arcbound Ravager, then I will be playing against pure aggro, and it's too slow. And, like, that's been my experience with this deck. All right, yeah, we just lose. I'm, I'm over it. Yep, good job. Where are we drawing a land? Nope. We're gonna get into another game because that was horrible. Horrible. Terrible. Terrible game. All right. We are going to play first. Of course we are. <laughs> great. 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 Sure. This is terrible, but if we live for, until turn four, we'll be fine. We do have Ink Moth Nexus and Cranial Plating. That's probably the only redeeming factor of this. I'm gonna keep. Put a Mimnite on bottom. Done. Land. No, this land. Good thing they have a stop on my upkeep. I would have played the wrong land there, but uh, they have a stop on my upkeep for some reason. So I didn't make that mistake. That's nice. What are we playing against? Blood Crypt is gonna absolutely eat through this hand if this is any kind of Rakdos control. Ah, it's like the perfectly wrong hand for a Rakdos deck. Of course, of course. I'm just, I can't, I can't, I can't. I can't. I can't with Affinity anymore. If I draw an aggro hand, I play against decks with board sweepers. If I draw a cranial plating, I play against a deck with a lot of spot removal. Oh, it's so miserable. It's just not fun anymore. It's not a fun deck anymore. 
I don't want to play it anymore. Not having fun with Affinity. Wizards of the Coast has been killing this deck slowly over the years, printing as much sideboard hate against it as possible, and the Mox Opal ban just officially makes this deck unplayable, I think. Again, add FNM, probably fine. Opponent leaves their mana up, so they're just gonna have spot removal. I don't even think it's worth Ink Moth Nexus. I think we equip and have it bolted or fatal pushed. Play the other cranial plating. And let's see that removal spell. Fatal push, lightning bolt. If we get one more land, we have Mystic Forge, and that'll change. Yep, there's the lightning bolt. How did I know? Because what else would it be? If we get one more land, yep, uh, Mystic Forge will be fine. We'll have three lands on top, so it won't matter, probably. Bitter Blossom. How do we beat Bitter Blossom with our 1-1 one -one flyers? Nope. No. No. No, I'm over it. Land? We did have land. Great. I don't care. We were drawing. We had a land on top anyway. God, I just hate it. I hate this deck so much. It's actively become not fun to play because it's so terrible. These are bad. Are they bad? It forces the opponent to either play a removal spell or a threat. They can't do both. So maybe these are good. These are bad and these are bad because I can't keep stuff in play. So we'll go down some of those. We're not going to get Steel Overseer anyway. Actually, what will happen is we will get Master of Ethereum and Steel Overseer in our opening hand. Here we go. Ready? We got one and no lands. Great. Mulligan. Uh, sure. This is terrible. Like, there's just no good hands with Affinity anymore, it feels like. Glimmer Void, because we're going to draw more lands, probably. And we'll play this. We will play this. And we will pass. Okay. Next turn, we'll play Master of or, uh, Ethereum Sculptor. And uh, if we get Lodestone Golem, that'd be cool. I'm not counting on it. Well, we get another land, so we'll play it eventually, no matter what. Okay, attack for one. Super exciting. Opponent goes to 19, and we pass the turn. Bitter Blossom again. Great. 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 But they didn't kill my Ethereum Sculptor, so that's good. No, Mystic Forge is so good. That's the only thing that can beat it. That's the only thing that beats Bitter Blossom. We should play that first, I think. Because they could have Thoughtseize. All right, we go into that. Pay three for Mystic Forge. Uh, that's free. Can't play that, can we? No. So we will... Attack for two. I'm not gonna bottom the, uh, Edge Champion, because it's gonna be really good against this deck. I want it in my hand. Better Blossom. Yep. Punter goes to 16. Lodestone Golem is gonna be good in this... Oh, never mind. They have... I was gonna say it's gonna be really good, because they're mana screwed, but they do have a third land. So, Mystic Forge and Ethereum Sculptor. <sighs> oh, somebody kill me, please! So Mystic Forge and Ethereum Sculptor is fantastic in this deck because we get to rip cards off the top and they're cheaper. But of course, we don't get to do anything with this deck. You can't have fun with Affinity anymore, guys. Deck's dead. It's not a fun deck to play. It's actually kind of miserable. We have to pay full price for this. That's right. So we'll play that. Great. This is free. Hey, well, this is kind of cool. Look at this. Holy crap. What's happening? Well, that's free. This is fun. Look at this. I'm having fun. Uh, I'll play that. Guys, I think I'm having fun. I'm having fun with Affinity right now. What's happening? I've been complaining this entire video, but I'm having fun. This is free. Uh, we will get rid of that. God dang it. That's fine. Uh, this cost two so we will pay two for that and they cannot touch that let's put this down here it will have protection from all colors and i'll just throw this i'll trade i'll trade i have enough creatures now this is fine for me yeah that's fine great and we'll pass i think yeah that was really fun i just had fun with affinity if only you could get the for, maybe we just need to play more land. Maybe this needs to be like a 24 land deck. I'm still playing it like an aggro deck with only 20 or 21 lands. But maybe it just needs to be a 24 land deck and the plan is just get to Mystic Forge. Whatever it takes. That's fine, I guess. Who needs cards in hand? I have my entire library that I can play. Yeah, that's gone. Sure. They're tapped out. Oh, they have one land, but they're mostly tapped out. Is there going to be a land? No. Nope. That cost one. And that costs the blue. And that costs two. Is it worth playing? Because thanks, we could play a lot of stuff in our deck for free. It might be worth just doing this. 
Ah, uh, no, but that's fine. We can pay one life and exile it. That's free. Uh, we can pay one life and exile it. That's two life. We can't do anything about that. Put it concedes. We won with affinity. Oh, but how many games did that take between two videos? That's like, that, 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 that's the first game, right? It's not just the first match. That's the first game at all. Guys, we won a single game with affinity. Now we have to win the match. Can we win a match with affinity? And just the tournament practice room, by the way, not a league, not a highly competitive uh, environment, just tournament practice. Can we win a match with affinity? I guess if we draw Mystic Forge, we might. This is way too many lands. Way too many. Nope. Don't want it. This is fine. Kind of. Cranial plating is not the card I want in this matchup, but at the same time, it's like the only power that we have. We're going to keep. What do we put on bottom? I'm leaning towards this. I guess we'll put that. I don't know. I definitely want cranial plating. I want some way to deal damage. Oh, God. Well, there goes cranial plating, probably. And without cranial plating, this hand does nothing. This hand is terrible without cranial plating. And even with cranial plating, they don't take cranial plating. Well, that's nice. And we drew another land, because, you know, that's what I really wanted. Um, yeah, we have power still, unless they have another Thought Seize. That could be the case. They might just Thought Seize us again. But even, like, with cranial plating, they could just bolt whatever we attach it to, and it doesn't matter. Kroxa. I would definitely just take the three life. I don't care about life. Life is meaningless. Who cares? Stupid. Pointless. Don't need it. Uh, I should get a color. I want to... No. I want this. And we'll play this. And we'll attack for one. Opponent's gonna go to 17. We're gonna go to 16. And next turn... We will equip cranial plating and then have whatever creature we equip die immediately because that's how it works with affinity. Please tap out. Ooh, that's going to get our land. That's fine, I guess. So we go to 13. So they can't kill the thing that we equip, so that's nice. So I think what we do is we're just going to equip here. We're going to animate here. Go to combat. Gaining life is good, because the further we can get our life up, the more likely that they die to Bitter Blossom. So, life is good. Want to gain life. I just said it was meaningless. I was wrong. I love life. Life is great. Give me all of it. I want all the life. I need it. Badly. Dark Conf- Oh! They might just die to their own stuff at this point. Uh, it's like, seeming very likely. Possibly. Ethereum Sculptor. Um, I just- I kind of just want to attack into this. Obviously, losing a Vault Scourge to a Fairy Rogue is not good. But they could just die to their own stuff before they can kill me. Let's... We're not going to gain life. We're not going to gain life. We're going to equip here. And then we're going to animate this. And we're going to attack for five and attack for one. They want to trade a token and take five to the face. That's great. That's fine. They could have a bolt for the ornament. They don't. They could have. They might just. Yeah, they're just going to die to their own stuff at this point. There's no way they kill me before they die to Dark Confidant and Bitter Blossom. They go to three, get a fatal push, which is pretty good. Go to two from Bitter Blossom. I think we just win. I think we went from them losing their own life. The irony here is we're not going to win because we killed the opponent. We're going to win because the opponent killed the opponent. Yeah, that gets my master or my Ethereum sculptor. That's fine. Next turn, we can just attack with both of our creatures. Oh, uh, they do have a fatal push, actually. Yeah. Okay. But, uh, they still have to block the Ornithopter, and it has two toughness. They attack for two, that's fine. So we go to 17, see what we draw. Cranial plating. Um, sure, we'll just play it. It's an extra power, not that it matters. Attack. They have to block or they die. They're going to go to one no matter what from Bitter Blossom. The question is, will Dark Confidant kill them or will they get a land? Here it goes. We win. We won with Affinity, guys. We won. And now we're at the menu because that's how uh, Magic Online works. It just kicked you. Uh, we'll go to, uh, we'll go to, we'll go to here. Go to here. Guys, we won with Affinity. Literally... 
Well, no, Ethereum Sculptor, I was gonna say none of the new cards really mattered. Ethereum Sculptor was a champion, especially with Mystic Forge. So a Sculptor, Mystic Forge, really good. Uh, this didn't really come into play much. Didn't really do anything. It could still be a good sideboard card. Not really relevant main board. I, these are probably still better as what you might think. Arcbound Ravagers, uh, Lodestone Golems. Like they're good in theory. I just, they're so clunky at four mana. Four mana is so much for a creature, especially in Affinity. Especially with a deck with only 21 lands. Yeah, there you go, guys. That is uh, Affinity Tempo, I guess. Thanks for watching, everyone. And I will see you in the next one. <laughs>